World War Games. Not all games are about war, but these ones are. Specifically World War I and World War II games coming up in 2024. But keep watching and you'll find that there's a surprising amount of variety in this list that I've mustered for you. Will any lead to victory? Let's find out. Headquarters World War II. This, contradictorily, is saying it's a fast-paced, turn-based strategy game where your battlefield tactics are as important as your army management skills. You get to experience both sides of the war, battling in Europe as the USA and the UK, or as Germany, storm bunkers, occupy houses, and win tank duels. So this game is a turn-based game. So it's the sort of classic tactics game where you have tanks and they do have sides. So shooting from the front or the back or the side does matter. Some tanks have more side armor than back armor. So shooting them in the back does count for extra points. But it is saying that it's fast paced as well. I mean, and in a turn based game, what that means is that generally you're not going to be slowly moving your units across the battlefield, getting into perfect position and then taking the perfect shots. It means you are going to be a bit more brawly with your tactics, but that doesn't mean you just throw strategy out the window. You do have to prove yourself as a masterful tactician. This game is coming with an editor tool to create a skirmish and multiplayer maps, so the community-made content should keep this game going. And just visually, this one is one of the better looking ones. I had a closer look at this one over at Gamescom, and I zoomed right in to the game, like real up close to the visuals, and it's textured. It looks great. The art team did a phenomenal job on this game. Gameplay, I only touched it, and it seems pretty good, but uh, we'll see how it pans out over the next year. And then for today's sponsor, Classified France 44. Click the link below to check it out. This is a turn-based tactical espionage and combat game set in the run-up to D-Day. Lead an elite team of soldiers and resistance fighters to victory against the German occupation forces. This game was just released and there's been a free demo, so there's quite a lot of information about it. And there's a lot to it. There's three mission types, Stealth, Ambush and Assault. There's a morale system where every shot counts, even if a shot misses, fire wears down enemy forces morale, so you don't have to hit every shot to have a positive effect for your gameplay. There's a bunch of characters and their origins that you'll get to know and discover their stories. You can build up a resistance network on the main map, and it's also promising a replayable campaign with 15 different endings, all through historically authentic gameplay which is supposed to be mirroring real-world military tactics. As an extra bonus, for community-made content, there's the classified system where players can access in-game tools to create their own missions and share those with the community. So overall, this game does sound good so far, and it's promising a lot, I'm always a fan of multiple playstyles, especially in tactics games that can sometimes feel like there's only one solution. So with all the different paths and approaches, and lots of things to discover, you should be able to take this one how you like. And since the game just released, you can go look at the user reviews and see what people are saying. Because there's been a free demo as well, there's already a lot of footage of the gameplay out there. So have a closer look at Classified France 44, just click the link down below and check it out on Steam and see if this is a World War game that you want to get into. Men of War 2, that's right, this highly anticipated sequel to a real-time tactics franchise was supposed to release in 2023, September that is, but it was delayed almost last minute to into 2024. Now this could be a very good thing because they say the feedback for the game in testing so far has been very good, but they need more time to squash bugs and just refine up the experience. So this could be a good thing for the game. Hopefully it is actually as refined as it needs to be by the time it does actually release. Anyway, this game is supposed to be bringing us all new units, locations, campaigns and game modes in a World War II tactical RTS-ish war game taking place on the Eastern and Western fronts. 
Now, on the Steam page, it does say that it's classic real-time strategy gameplay, but keep in mind, this is just the combat aspect. There's no real base building or resource collection kind of thing, so I consider this more of a tactics game. But with a new advanced AI, a cinematic single-player experience, multiplayer combat in PvP and co-op modes, with varied and historical units, and just generally really good graphics, along with full mod support, Men of War 2 does promise a lot, and everyone seems to be into what it is. Even if you don't consider it a proper RTS, RTS fans are looking forward to this one. So hopefully the game does end up as refined as it needs to be and delivers on all of these promises. But it's going to be in 2024 either way. For an impressive looking first person game, Resolve. This is supposed to be a large-scale combined arms tactical shooter where you dynamically form and build a team to fight for control over scarce resources. Experience tense calculated engagement with your raiding party or fierce frontline battles with your team in a world that has been devastated by war. At an initial glance, this looks very impressive, but you always have to be a little bit skeptical on whether this can all be delivered, right? The trailer looks great though. Large scale maps, deep team play mechanics, high tension tactical engagements, a whole bunch of maps based on iconic battles and new battles as well. Plenty of firearms, a roster of vehicles and artillery, and a responsive cover system. Yeah, it sounds great. Now, there's no current full release window right now if you look at the Steam page. It says it's going into early access, but no particular date for that. However, under the details, it does say they're expecting a full release during 2024, which uh, for a game that looks so impressive is ambitious, but maybe they could do it. For now, the only release window we can think of for Resolve is sometime in 2024, but it should be going into early access first, so we'll see how that goes at the start of early access. For another tank game, Steel Aces. This is an upcoming historically accurate tank shooter with iconic vehicles from the inception of tanks to the modern era. So although this does cover a slightly wider range of history, it does go over World War I and World War II, so I'm including it here. So of course this game does look like it's got a lot of promise, and it does seem like, from what I can tell, the developers are very passionate about this project. There just happens to be a lot of games that are competing in this space as a sub-genre of military tank kind of battling kind of games. So it's gonna have a lot to live up to. This one is going a free-to-play model, which many of them do as well. And it could be really cool. Tank Warfare, it looks good, it could be really nice. A historical MMO tank adventure, which brings you through the Battle of Cambrai in 1917, to the Battle of the Bulge in 1944, all the way up until more modern stuff, but I'm not going to talk about that here because it's a World War 1 and 2 list. But yeah, it looks cool, and it does seem like the details on the tank are the biggest selling point here. Every part is sort of simulated, there's volumetric armor, which is actually a very impressive concept, let alone if it can be implemented properly. You need to have in-depth knowledge of your vehicle so you know what's going on, what's happening to it, what can it take and what it can't, which leads to what is promising to be immersive realism. Overall, Steel Aces does seem like it's gonna be for the tank aficionado, which it may or may not be able to deliver on, but it is aiming for a 2024 release window at the moment, so we'll be able to test the metal of these tanks relatively soon if they stick to their schedule. Hey, now that you're a bit into the list, I'm sure you're enjoying it, so it'd be greatly appreciated if you can like the video. Thank you! Alright, next game. Red Glare. This is a World War II real-time tactics game where you play agents of the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, combating a secret German expedition in South America. It has five well-balanced characters and a story campaign playing out across a continent, including multiple environments like jungle, desert and snow maps, with real-time tactics, a dynamic day-night cycle on each map, which does have gameplay effects, a dynamic weather system which also has gameplay effects, 
and plenty of tactical approach, strategy, and stealth. You'll be encountering a wide variety of enemies, including tanks, dogs, and snipers, and maps can have more than 200 enemies, up to almost 500 enemies, which is pretty big for a real-time tactics game. Now, having said all that, this is from a solo developer, but considering that, it looks pretty good, and it seems to be offering a lot. There is a free demo you can check out, and it actually released at the end of January, so it's out now with very few but positive reviews, so maybe it's a niche one you'll be into. Now, for a World War game that you might not be quite expecting in this list, Conscript. So there's a lot that I personally like about this, and I know not everyone is into pixel art, but I really appreciate the pixel art in this game. It's sort of weirdly realistic, but also gamey and arcadey. It's set during the First World War. A lone French soldier must navigate twisted trenches, scavenge for limited supplies, and solve complex puzzles, all whilst fighting for survival in the midst of mankind's most brutal and horrifying conflict. This is saying that it's a new take on classic survival horror. So it's a survival horror, but instead of monsters trying to kill you, it's just the First World War, which essentially is as monstrous, I think. <laughs> so it's a World War horror game, adventure, survival horror thing, which is just really interesting. And I know it's not going to be for everyone, but if you're looking for World War games, then this is definitely one of them. And I love the pixel art, you might like it as well. Just looking at the screenshots of the UI, it does have that classic 90s feel to it. It's not fully 90s game, you know, it would have the modern creature comforts that we enjoy today, of course. But Conscript does look like I think a lot of you would be interested in. Not all of you, but a lot of you. So I wanted to share this here because it's just something different. At the time of recording, there is a free demo you can try on Steam, so you can have a look at it right now. There's no release window at the moment, but with a free demo and a pretty good look at what the game is, I can expect a 2024 release. And just personally, I'm gonna want to see what this one is like. Going back to World War II, Forgotten but Unbroken. This is a tactical turn-based strategy game inspired by XCOM, but supposed to be offering its unique take on the genre. You meet historical World War II heroes and fight against elite fighters of the Third Reich. You are leading the resistance against the Axis forces, helping to liberate Europe. Basically, yeah, it's World War II XCOM, and I think, I mean, if it's just that, I think a lot of people will be into it, right? XCOM, very popular, everyone loves that as a turn-based tactics game. So basically any other setting, if it's anywhere close to being as good as XCOM, people will love that. So the question really is, can it live up to that kind of quality and standards? It's currently set for a quarter to 2024 release window, so we should be seeing this fully in the coming months, unless it's delayed. For another very different kind of game on this list, Telegraphist 1920 Beats of War. Now, this is a World War I game that is a narrative rhythm game that takes you back to 1920. You see, hear, and feel the Battle of Warsaw from a novel perspective. You are a war telegraphist, which is a crucial bond between soldiers and commanders. You are essentially the communications person in the the HQ of communication. I'm not entirely sure of what the exact terminology of this profession is during World War I. But yeah, it's a narrative rhythm game. It's historical. You'll be reliving the Polish-Soviet war over 20 crafted levels. There's boss encounters where you'll be encountering multiple Soviet commanders leading their armies and you'll have to jam their signals, break Soviet code, or use other ways to help your troops on the front line while you are not there. And you just have to quickly change what you're doing, your decisions, and also your rhythm is being tested through all of this for your, I guess, your personal skills. There's also supposed to be Steam Workshop support and player-made campaigns with a built-in level editor, so there will be some community content for this. Though, it has to be said that this does seem like more of a niche kind of game. Rhythm games can be big, but a World War I rhythm game? That's 
at least something new and unexpected. And I don't know whether it's gonna be a great game or not. It's hard to predict whether it'll be popular or not. But it's nice seeing something that's different. At the time of recording, there is a free demo, which is great if you're really not sure about Telegraphist 1920 Beats of War. You can just try it right now. And it's set for a quarter three 2024 release window, so it will be releasing later on during the year, but you can check it out right now. Next we have Rattenreich. This is a grim and unforgiving world where war has continued for years. Slum-like cities, burnt corpses, steam tanks, soldiers in imperial uniforms, and generally kind of an alternate history, alternate tech line kind of vibe. The environment is destructible, vehicles are customizable, and units have a lot of things that you can do with them. Now we've seen quite a bit of this game with a long 10 minute gameplay video on Steam which you can just watch if you want to see the whole thing. And it looks kind of good and seems like really looks very very promising. But you know until we get our hands on it we never know quite for sure but Rattenreich seems like one to watch. As it's aiming for a 2024 release there was a free demo before so you can find footage of that otherwise we should find out what this is on full release later this year. For more first-person shooting, Enlisted Reinforced. This one you're not just commanding a single soldier, but an entire squad. This is an MMO squad-based shooter where you recreate key battles in the bloodiest war of the 20th century, with hundreds of soldiers, tanks and aircraft taking part in each battle. So the way this works is it's a multiple lives sort of thing. You command your own squad of AI controlled soldiers. If you lose a soldier, you can immediately switch to another one in your squad and continue to fight. You are controlling directly one first person shooter character. But then when you die, you take over the body of someone else in your squad. So that's the, the lives system. You are your entire squad, which is an interesting take on how to do this. You'll be going to iconic fronts throughout the war. There's combined arms, so there's plenty of military equipment, tanks, armored cars, motorcycles, aircrafts, fighters and bombers. They're all available for your army. And there's plenty of tools of war as well, with 16 different soldier classes, each with perks and specialized weapons. There's not only small arms and heavy weapons, there's anti-tank guns, turrets, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, rifle, grenade launchers, and all that stuff. On top of all of that, there's a map and mission editor, so people can just make their own scenarios, levels, and whatever they want, really, in this war setting. Overall, it does seem so good, but also at the time of recording, even though it's promising a quarter one 2024 release window, which Honestly, at once this video goes up, there's not much time left for quarter one. Quarter one is just until the end of March. And the trailer and screenshots are quite heavily curated, still very cinematic. It seems like they're mainly showing off what it's supposed to be and not necessarily what it is. With its very near release window, I can imagine that they'll be we'll be seeing a lot more of enlisted reinforced soon or the game might be delayed. It's hard to tell, it's hard to predict these things. I thought I should share this one because it is releasing in 2024. Even if it's delayed, it should still be 2024. And it does look very promising. At least the idea of it is interesting. And even though it's a first person shooter with vehicles and all of that, it does have some twists, which sort of set it apart. It's United 1944. Here we have a game that wants to be an innovative World War II shooter. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of games that want to be an innovative World War II shooter, so we'll see how this one goes. Combining weapon crafting, base building, and team strategy, you'll be fighting for territory in 16 versus 16 urban guerrilla battles in domination mode, or you can explore a city in ruins as a lone wolf in survivor mode. You unlock skills, customize your hero, and play your way to make history in this World War II shooter. 
So it does seem like there's this new trend of adding scavenging, crafting, building and defending into first person shooter games. Or is it more like they're adding shooting games into survival games? Anyway, there seems to be this trend of blending survival games and first-person shooters, which makes my job very difficult, but I'm gonna stick to United 1944 being an FPS game primarily. And it's a team game, not a hero-based one, but 16 vs 16 can be quite fun. It's large enough to have some scale, but not too large. But of course, as I mentioned, you can always go it alone if you really want to. Two large maps as battlefields, a boot camp and shooting range to practice your skills, team hierarchy with squad leaders and squad comms, in session skill trees with 40 plus skills to choose mid battle. So that means you're leveling up in a specific game, not necessarily outside the game. So you level up as you play through a round. 16 iconic weapons from World War II with more on the way. Solid weapon models, damage fall off ballistic projectiles, recoil and spread and all that good stuff. Along with dynamic day-night cycles. And the freeform building of walls, doors and barricades can make things interesting or maybe it's just muddying the experience. It's hard to tell. I'm personally very interested just to see how this first person shooter with survival game elements works out because we haven't really seen too many games take this approach and now that it seems to be a trend we're getting quite a few of them and it could be the future of first person shooters or maybe not <laughs> the interesting thing about this list is that you can see games going in every direction and it's hard to pinpoint what the next big shooter is if you think you know let me know and for a third person shooter over the top World War I. This one brings brutal, real-time, third-person combat set during the First World War. You arm yourself with a diverse arsenal, including rifles, artillery, and tanks, and you navigate the mud-soaked battlefields of the Great War. After a number of first-person shooters, it's nice to see a third-person option here if you prefer that. And you'll be engaging in massive battles, 200 players in a single battle, or you can be filled up with bots as well. So there's just going to be a lot of people on the battlefield fighting each other. You can join the infantry, you can serve in the artillery, you can enlist as a tanker, or you could muster as a specialist, which will be constructing defenses, digging trenches, supplying ammunition, deploying anti-tank rifles and dynamite. Personally, I actually always played the specialist kind of utility role in these sorts of games. I like playing the support role, so it's nice that you can be the run and gun infantry, you can be a tank driver, or you can play that support role, which was a very big part in World War One, particularly with the trenches. Another promise for this one is real life bullet physics, so Instead of relying on hit scan, it will actually simulate the projectile physics for all the shots, all the bullets, which sounds great, but also sometimes that doesn't always play out quite as nicely in gameplay or it's just implemented a bit weird. So we'll have to see if the realistic projectile physics, one, are realistic, two, it's fun. There's also destructible environments and dynamic terrain, which is a big part of World War I, especially the bombings to set up trenches or just destroying trenches. And there's supposed to be over 12 handcrafted maps or even randomly generated maps for people to play on, along with dynamic time. So there'll be day-night cycles and weather, rain and fog to lower visibility and heavy winds will alter ballistics. Those realistic ballistics physics on the bullets, I'm not sure whether they're talking about like the big artillery gonna be affected by wind or even your individual rifle bullets might be thrown off course by strong winds. And on top of that, there is an in-game map editor. It is actually nice seeing that so many of the games in this list have the avenue for user-generated content. They do seem to promise a lot of content that comes along, but it's always nice whether you can mod the game or just make more content, make more levels and tell more stories. It's nice that a lot of the games here are actually including map editors and level editors. But generally speaking, over the top, World War I looks nice, looks cool. There's no particular release window on this one as it was just announced at the start of 2024. So although it's not confirmed for a 2024 release, as it's a recent announcement and it's still early in the year, there's a good chance that it does release this year. 
so I wanted to tell you about Over the Top World War I. And then for another genre mix, Kaiser Punk. This game is very interesting because it seems to be combining city building and grand strategy. Well, they're trying to make it seamlessly. And that seems to be the trend with a lot of grand strategies these days where it's trying to mix in other genres, particularly RTS or city building. And in Kaiser Punk, you're supposed to build and conquer in an alternative 20th century world. You engage in battle on land, sea and air, and you use your economic power to emerge as the ultimate victor. So you'll be shaping your own city-state from the ground up, where every street, factory and skyline is up to you. You unlock new buildings and building upgrades, you build on ground and on water, and new tech is unlocked depending on how you build your city. On the grand strategy side, there's over a hundred regions to be conquered and exploited. Each region comes with its own bonuses and penalties, so you gotta choose where you wanna go. And you'll be assembling your armies to take on the rival factions of the world on land, sea and air. There's also production chains and logistics, where there's over a hundred various resources to mine, farm, refine and manufacture, and you have to get things around with transportation networks and trade. Overall, it's a game of choices. You're going to be choosing things at every step of the way, and if you make the wrong choices, you may be stripped of your power. I mean, personally, this seems very, very promising. It looks really nice to look at, actually. As a City Builder fan, this might be the in point for getting into grand strategies and just scaling up that gameplay. But you know, it really comes down to how it's all executed. And right now, Kaiserpunk is just looking at a 2024 release at some point. Nothing specific yet, but I am personally very curious of what Kaiserpunk is going to be at the end of the day. For a highly anticipated one, Commando's Origins. You have been selected for a mission which will shape the fate of the entire world. Witness the very beginning of the legendary elite World War II force in this sequel that has been long awaited, because the Commando series does go back a long way. So this is a real-time tactics game, where you engage in daring raids, covert sabotage, or courageous rescue missions. This one is meant to be challenging, and you will be assembling an extraordinary team featuring six infamous characters, each with their own storied history, and you band together to form this fighting force. Through the missions, there are meant to be many paths to victory. Detailed and interactive environments allow multiple approaches, where you can sneak, climb, and even drive various vehicles, or you can hide and creep your way. But you know, guns blazing is always a valid strategy. With your team, you're supposed to control them with precise and intuitive controls, being able to coordinate complex actions simultaneously, which you will need to do because you'll be fighting on all fronts, from the barren Arctic to the African desert. Also, as a fun note, there's two-player cooperative multiplayer. You can play either online or on local split screen, which is a nice option. Commando's Origins, it's got a lot of promise and it has a big reputation to live up to. It's only slated for a 2024 release right now, sometime in the year, nothing specific yet, and it better live up to expectations, otherwise a lot of people are going to be very disappointed. There you have it. Press the like button and get games using the GOG referral link below to support videos like this one. Click the link and buy any game, it really does help. Also, thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members who really support this channel and keeping videos like these being made. Join if you want your name on future videos. If you want to stay in the know for another genre, go to the next list video linked on screen as I'm sure commanders like yourself would not want to miss all the big strategy and RTS games in the other lists. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there.